Hello again. Hello. So very nice to meet you. Um, why don't you start by explaining who you are and what you do? Sure. So my name is Eric D. I'm co-founder and CEO of Bloom Life. Um, and what Bloom Life is, we're a women's health company working in prenatal care. Um, and the whole idea is um, how do we put better solutions in the world to increase access to care, empower moms with better information, and aggregate um, data longitudinally throughout pregnancies, develop better screening and diagnostic tools to predict and prevent pregnancy complications. What inspired this work? Uh, so I think there's two things that kind of came together. Um, on a personal level, um, um, a few years before starting Bloom Life, I and my partner started a very long, difficult journey to start a family. And we're experiencing a lot of miscarriages and sort of we're in the throes of fertility treatments. Um, and everything kind of manifested itself in the end into a high-risk pregnancy with everything that could go wrong went wrong. I mean, from um, gestational diabetes, placental complications, preeclampsia, preterm birth, postpartum hemorrhage, like everything. Um, and just experienced the huge amount of unanswered questions that people have during this time of life. And in spending um, a fair amount of time shadowing doctors, just saw how antiquated um, prenatal care is in terms of the information we use, the technology available to doctors, and felt this was just a very interesting area to innovate in. Um, and the other thing that kind of came together was I have a PhD in biomedical engineering. Um, I was working at a European company called IMEC that was developing advanced wearable technologies for both consumer medical applications. Um, and while there, I was uh, working in business development and found I was licensing technology we developed into consumer electronics companies and that exact same technology we were licensing to medical device companies. And so the uh, light bulb went off to say, fundamentally, there's no difference between a medical device and a consumer product in terms of technology. And that means that a consumer product could be used to crowdsource clinical data feasibly. And um, the opportunities for that in underserved areas, such as pregnancy, became pretty apparent to me. And so that's what we've been focusing on doing is, is, is putting better data and capturing better data in pregnancy to develop you know, new tools for doctors to, um, to improve birth outcomes. Sure. So talk to me about the use case. So uh, get into how the technology works and... Sure. Yeah. So we do a little show and tell. Sure. So, um, so what we've developed is a... Um, we've developed technology. We've developed a device that allows you to... You can take a look at that. That allows you to um, remotely track health parameters of mom and baby outside the hospital. Okay. Um, we believe that data will transform prenatal care in a way that like, is 100x what you think about at other... Uh, areas of medicine because fundamentally there has been no data collected in pregnancy ever, right? Very, 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 very little. Like, chronic disease has been studied extensively, cardiovascular disease has been studied extensively. The amount of research that's gone into pregnancy women's health is, is a thousandth percent of what it's been in all these other areas. And so for us, what we're focusing on doing is crowdsourcing data from a consumer market. So that product's been in the hands of women throughout the United States. Um, Low-risk moms, high-risk moms, 45% of our users are in rural communities. And what it allows us to do is crowdsource by far the largest physiological data set in the world by three orders of magnitude in pregnancy. And this is being used to develop better screening and diagnostic tools. The first one being um, essentially a tool to screen for labor onset. Got it. So I would put this on and then it starts tracking exactly what, what That's we That's right. Tracking? So when you put it on, yeah. um, and so what we can track what we show today is contraction frequency duration. It's very simple. It's a validated second opinion to help women understand they're having contractions, they're not having contractions, um, timing these things to make better decisions to decide you know, what to do. Um, but what we're able to track beyond that is fetal heart rate and fetal movement, which are the best ways of determining if the baby's okay. And we also track maternal stress and maternal sleep, which have been shown to be risk factors for preterm birth, all through that, yeah. that device. That is amazing. So I'm just curious, from a health equity standpoint or um, reaching underserved populations, right. how does this change the game? Yes, I love <laughs> that you asked that question. So um, one of the biggest challenges for underserved communities is access to care, um, either because they live far away from the hospital, um, they work multiple jobs and they can't get to the doctor's appointment, or as we're finding, there is distrust of the medical system. And so um, we actually have secured, um, one of four companies to secure a phase two award for the Maternal Child Health Bureau for deploying these technologies in underserved rural communities. So we've been working um, and um, testing in partnership with some folks um, at UCSF, the Black Infant Health Program, to see how can these technologies improve access to information, change the power dynamics between providers and patients, and also empower women with information they feel like they are in greater control of. 
And so the, the end goal is to have these kind of products, which currently is not reimbursed, to have fully reimbursed, so they are accessible to all those women, um, where you'll be able to provide them information in their homes or in wherever they're at on a much more convenient manner that they have access to, and they feel like they can actually have the right conversation with the doctor, rather than having all the things done to them and then being told, yeah, things are good, not good. They actually have the tools to actually be able to have that conversation on the way. Sure. Um, I love I love what you're doing, and I hope that you continue to win at what you're doing. Um, as a woman of color, I know firsthand there's disparity rates between women right. of color um, and maternal uh, outcomes. Totally. So thank you for what you're doing. We appreciate it. We've still got a long road ahead, um, but uh, I think we've, we've shown that we could put uh, technology in the hands of moms, that they can use it, that the information you can provide to them is valuable, is reassuring, is not creating undue stress and anxiety, and that this data can lead to development of really breakthrough screening and diagnostic tools, um, which we look to deploy into reducing C-section rates, improving preterm birth outcomes, and just improving overall efficiency of care. Gotcha. And what makes you passionate about the work that you do? <laughs> uh, I, I don't know. I mean, I often get questioned, like, well, why is a guy working in maternal health? I mean, women's health is something everyone should care about. It's not a women's problem. It's a global problem. Um, and I think everyone should care about women's health. Um, again, I've had my own personal experience over... Um, what can go wrong in pregnancy and the huge amount of stress and anxiety creates. And we know that conception through the first thousand days of life are the most critical for lifelong health and development. And if we know that, we should actually be innovating in this space. If everyone's all about, at these conferences all about preventative care, this is the highest leverage point you could have in all of healthcare for improving long-term outcomes. And there's been a lack of innovation here. And I think our goal is to show that not only um, can you improve outcomes, but there's actually money to be made in serving these, these groups of people. And we're seeing some more interest and then we just hope to be one of the companies that are really um, pioneering much and long overdue innovation in maternal health and, and work around mom and babies. Perfect. Do you have any other thoughts or overall views on what we're talking about before I close this up? Uh, other hall views. Um, yeah, I mean, investors should know that that there, this is a really valuable space that um, the costs associated with maternal health and adverse events here are significant. They're usually one of the top three cost drivers for employers um, and complications are getting worse. Like demographics are changing and something needs to change because 50% of the U.S. counties lack basic obstetric services. There's a shortage of OBGYNs today. And so something needs to come in to fill that gap and we believe this is going to be in part to be part of the solution. Um, um, and also, you know, to hopefully find um, uh, uh, provider networks and health systems um, and payers that also want to innovate in this area. Um, there's a lot of really unique things about it um, in terms of your ability to sort of produce outcomes quickly because it's pregnancy, you get a result every nine months. And so, yeah, we're just hoping to, to, to inspire other folks to start finding our tribe of folks that really care about maternal health and start working together collaboratively because the problems are massive. No one's going to do it on their own. And so we just hope to find like-minded, values-aligned partners across the spectrum, whether that's the investors, um, the provider side, the payer side, or other companies working in the space to work with to, to move the space forward. Thank you so very much for your time and for sharing about your product with us. And thanks for the opportunity for sharing it.